Good morning. Welcome to Member Focus Monday. I'm Christina Schaefer, Director of Social Media for HAR, and I am joined this morning by HAR's Strategic Architect, Jeremy Conway. Welcome, Jeremy. Good morning, Christina. Thank you so much for joining us, and, and I just want to thank you again for working with us and rescheduling. This program was actually scheduled for last week, but since none of us here in Texas really had power, myself included. We lost it for about 70 hours. Uh, we did reschedule for today. So thank you for working with us, uh, Jeremy. Well, thank you for, uh, it, was, it was amazing to watch from 1500 miles away. It was horrifying to see all the places that I've been to over the past 15 years and, and think, wow, what a terrible thing. So I'm, I hope everybody is safe this morning and has a bath. Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I myself lost power for about 70 hours and, and we went to stay with family that ended up losing power a few hours after we got there. But um, eventually it came back and we're all happy and healthy today. So everybody tuning in this morning, I, I hope you have power and water as well. Um, yesterday afternoon, Jeremy, you know, we, we work around the clock over here. So uh, yeah. yesterday afternoon, a few of us staff were, were on a planning call and the city of Houston lifted the boil advisory, <laughs> the water boil advisory, and we all cheered. Um, so we hopped off that call and everybody took a shower. But <laughs> uh, again, <Good. laughs> again, with that, I just want to thank all of you for tuning in today. I hope you are all safe, uh, healthy and happy as we move forward to face some new challenges. And I know Jeremy is going to be giving us some challenges this morning, um, some things we need to look at in ways that we can improve our business. So Jeremy, um, you've been on this program many times, but um, for anybody who's never heard from you before, if you don't mind, uh, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Okay, well, well, I'm coming to you this morning uh, uh, where my wife and I live in Northern Michigan uh, at the, at the end, and on, on a beautiful lake at the end of a dirt road. It could not be further from where most of you folks are. Um, but as strategic architect, I have a couple of different functions. Uh, one of them has to do with collecting information about where we're going. So I work very closely with Bob Hale. He and I have actually are celebrating this week one year without a day off. Mm -hmm. And uh, it starts at four in the morning and I get up and uh, uh, we, we research 33 different publications and medias every day uh, because we need to know what's happening so we can figure out what is going to happen to our members and how we can help them. And that information, then Bob takes that information and we work together to create a document called the CEO Report. And it, it's, it's an amazing document that, that keeps track of what's changing, what we believe is a permanent change. Um, and then the other thing we do is that working with Jim Sherry, uh, Jim and I are responsible for the annual objectives program. So this afternoon, uh, hopefully, if we're, if, if we're, if we're on, our, on our game, the, the executive committee will approve uh, a 17 page document, which includes 13 very specific objectives designed to create the new normal for the association. And it's based upon what we believe the new normal will be for our members. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the pride of the, of the Houston Association of Realtors is to be where they need us. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, so I just want to start off with just the general here. The new normal. We we've heard about it. We it seems like we can't stop hearing about it. But <laughs> yeah. some people, um, from the conversations I've had with you, some people are a little confused about what exactly the new normal is. So, what is the new normal? Well, now, now uh, Claudia and and uh, Lori keep telling me not to sound like a professor, so I'm going to try hard not to sound like. A, but <laughs> I think the best way to understand it is that there's four things we're dealing with here. So. In the old days, this would have been back in November of, of 2019, we had our daily routine, and we now call that the old normal, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, some of you will discover as we move forward, uh, we work with a group of psychiatrists from around the country who help us understand the mental health issues that we're dealing with, but they tell us that generally speaking, most adults can't remember the old normal after 10 and a half months. So one of the things is we might dream about and think positively about the, the, the old normal, but most of us won't be able to remember other than the major events. Now, the next thing, and you all went through that. This is what's cool about this week, I, that you arranged that we could have that experience last week. So about 10 minutes after the electricity went out, you all did something. Some of you maybe got in your car, some of you got candles, got a flashlight. You began to accommodate this new environment 
and that's called the crisis normal. So all the crazy things you did to accommodate the disru disruption in your life, that's called the crisis normal. After about two days, you got good at it, all right? So there's some things you just started doing automatically. That was your interim normal, and had this lasted two or three weeks, you would have practiced your interim normal. Now, at the at, when it came back, uh, it wasn't long enough for you to create a new normal, but you went back to your old normal. But I'm willing to bet you that everyone listening this morning made a couple of subtle changes. They swore they would never not have flashlight batteries again, or they'd always have something. I mean, they, they made some subtle changes, and, and so they really did kind of invent a new normal. Mm -hmm. So our problem with the new normal now is that everyone's been talking about the new normal for the last year. We're not even close to the new normal. We, we probably have the, the psychiatric group that I work with from different parts of the country. We're, we're suggesting that the new normal will probably arrive somewhere between December 1st of next year and February, middle of February of 2022, um, which is that point at which we're finally going to understand what our lifestyle is going to be like in the post-pandemic world. But we're nowhere near, there's no, no we're, we're right now in an interim normal, much of which will be immediately replaced once you don't have to wear a mask anymore or once you don't have to go through some of those basic things. Okay. And, and that was kind of my next question, because some people believe we're already in that new normal, yet others believe that one day we'll get back to that old way of doing things. Um, so it sounds like, <laughs> like what you just said, there, we're in an interim normal. So it seems like we're yeah. creating some normality, but we, we haven't quite achieved that new normal yeah. that, you're, that you're speaking of. Well, you're bringing up one of the things that's, <clears throat> that's kind of scary. I mean, I say scary, but it's nerve wracking and anxiety for those of us who are studying this. Um, and that is that, that, that significant numbers of people believe that one morning that the flag will be raised from half mass to full mass, and the gun will go off, and we're all going to go back to what we would refer to as our old normal. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is, and, and again, all the things, all the comments we're making today have something to do with life's philosophies and attitudes, okay? There's no question about it that the new normal is a big picture will involve the most significant shift and change most of us have ever had at any point in our life. But the flip side of that is that depending on your life's philosophy, the opportunities which lie both for you personally and as real estate professionals over the next several months are, are incredible. The, 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 you, could, you could write a whole book just mm -hmm. about the new opportunities of the new normal. So, so the fact is, no, we're, not, we're, not, we're nowhere near the new normal. Uh, we'll we'll start probably seeing that based on where we are right now. You'll begin to see that probably in August, some of the things you start seeing will be the the the, the, the composites uh, elements of the new normal. But nothing you're doing now is the new normal. It's the interim. It's what we're doing while we're waiting for life to come back. Oh, gotcha. Okay, <laughs> so it was what we were doing when the power was out, is what you're saying? Yeah. Yes, so, exactly. <laughs> yeah, very good. Okay, so that makes sense. So. And, and that's par partially why we wanted to have you on, because you always bring such great information from all of these news sources and, and different sources that you that you have. Um, and, and we want to know how it's going to affect our business and, and how it's going to affect realtors business and what they can do, what challenges they they're going to be facing. But before we even get to that, just as as not as professionals, but as people, what will the new normal mean for us? Well, um, OK. So I, I was I, I'm, I'm trying very hard not to move over to the dark side, but uh, okay. at the at meeting with the, the seven psychiatrists, we meet on Tuesday morning and we we tend to go into the mental health issues because that's their immediate. That's what they're working on in all their programs. So one of the things that that was suggested is when we get out of this, we're probably going to have um, an absolute epidemic of divorces. Um, and it, it's just because people have now had this incredibly intimate experience without benefit of the outside distractions. And many people are going to decide, you know what, I just don't want to spend the rest of my life with this person. And it's not, it's just the way it is. Um, and so that's, that's one of the negative things. Yeah. On the other hand, if you read the, uh, if you read the, the publications, what you're discovering is that people over the past year have gone out and rediscovered the craziest things. So I understood the bread baking. That was something that was cool. Um, the New York Times yesterday had a whole article on people who are building miniature doll houses. Um, it's a, there's just all these things that people always wanted to do 
and now are doing, and they'll carry those forward. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the kinds of books you read and, and also, and people have been fantasizing about taking this trip or that trip. Um, you know, it's, it's a, so, so lots of the things you've picked up in the interim will spill over and, and you'll keep doing it. And mm -hmm. so that, that's kind of a, I mean, it's not clear cut. It, it molds and, 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 and goes back and forth. Okay. So as far as realtors and their business, what does the new normal mean for realtors and their business? Okay. So, um, it, it, first of all, it's important to understand that while many of us have been working our way through the pandemic uh, in, in, in our, in, our, our interim thing, there are other people out there who understand, as I do and as, as Bob does and other people who are studying this, that this is going to be a, an, opportun an amazing opportunity for people who have their act together, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so there are many people who have been working on this for the last year. Some of them are huge companies that have been funded by venture capital and have a billion dollars to spend to put this together and put that together. And you, you hear about them all the time. You kind of know who those are. Mm -hmm. And they've been waiting to, they've been designing their new normal and getting ready to launch it. Um, but, but the fact is that everyone uh, is, everyone should be thinking about and working on, essentially, what are the things you don't like about your job right now? What are the things you don't like about, because chances are the things that you don't like are the very things that consumers didn't like, which when we get back together and people have options, they're going to change that. Hmm. So a lot of the pain points in our industry for both our providers, our brokers, our agents, and our, our customers are going to go away. And so one of the things that people need to be thinking about is, well, gee, what about that? You know, could, you know, could this actually be a, a pain-free situation. Mm -hmm. And and so you're seeing lots of people on one side designing new companies, uh, new business models. Um, I mean, weird enough, uh, Saturday they announced that, that, that one of the big title companies had just got an $150 million venture capital uh, um, investment. And, and the whole purpose of it is to make the closing enjoyable, mm -hmm. which is Really, how could that possibly happen? <laughs> uh, but I mean, what you're seeing is that there'll be so many cool things. So is that? Yeah, is that, that makes sense. To you? Yeah, I mean, yes, and, and you know, it, it makes me think about, um, and it's a it's a different industry. But a few weeks ago, when we had um, our president CEO Bob Hale on, and he talked to us about his car leasing story, and I, I know that you know how smooth that was for him, and that he didn't have to leave his home, and they. We're able to do everything for them electronically. You know, again, it's taking out some of those pain points of sitting in the car dealership yeah. for hours on end and all of that. So, yeah, yeah. that makes perfect sense. So, so again, the, the word here, if we had a, if we had a, you know, if, if Claudia was sitting here, we'd say, Claudia, flash the word opportunity in big letters up on the screen. <laughs> because yeah. as much as you may think, and again, some of this has to do with, with, well, what we've discovered, a lot of research has been done, by the way. That's another thing. There's been more research done now. We know more. If you read psychology today, we know more about people just in the last year that we've learned because they're in these weird situations. But the interestingly enough, I, I it was my assumption that that old folks would simply would would want to go back to the old the old way and, and it turns out that they're the least supportive of the old way they're mm -hmm. the most excited about the new normal um and so it is it is an exciting thing and it's an amazing opportunity but it does have to do with the fact that if you if it's your sense that you're not i'm not changing i'm going back to the way i always was you you better before you announce that to anyone else in your life, you want to might take a little tour and find out how many things you're depending on to be part of your old normal are still there. Many of them aren't going to be there anymore. And so you have to you know, see what's available when you start up your new normal. But the, but the big thing is it's an opportunity in real estate. <clears throat> um, there's just all, and, and it's not just technologies, it's attitude. It's, it's a mm. consumer today. Mm. You know, I mean, think about the fact that Zillow is anticipating over two million transactions next year that just come about because it turns out that people didn't like living in this in the Silicon Valley. They mm -hmm. hated it. It turns out they didn't like four hours of commuting. They hated it. And and they're going, I'm not going back to that. That's nonsense. And it turns out that many of their employers are saying, yeah, we don't care where you work from, you know. So mm -hmm. 
lots of opportunity. Don't don't miss the opportunity because you're kind of looking for how to get back to where you started. That makes sense. Um, just a funny comment here that came in from Natalie Henschelwood. She said, what's the listing price on a dollhouse and can we put them in the MLS? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, some of these look pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah, I, I guess yeah. it would depend on the size and the location of that dollhouse, yeah, right? Yeah, really, yeah. <laughs> and then whether you have to register it as a vehicle because it's in your pocket, I don't know. Yeah, just a few comments um, as well in about uh, divorce because you've mentioned um, what may be to come in, in people's personal lives there. Um, Richard said, get to know a good divorce lawyer for real estate referrals. I mean, kind of a somber truth there, right, Jeremy? Yeah. And as a lawyer, <laughs> I appreciate the term good lawyer. That's a good... Yeah, good lawyer. You don't hear that term very often. Right, absolutely. <laughs> so um, m moving on, um, you know, you're, you're challenging realtors to to look at things with, with new eyes, look at their business with new eyes. Um, but what are some things they should be aware of when they're dealing with their clients as we approach or achieve that new normal? Okay. Well, first of all, if you have anybody that you're working with who says, ah, that pandemic, that's nonsense. It hasn't bothered me in the least. Mm -hmm. Go get a new client. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, every one of us has been impacted. In fact, the Mayo Clinic tells us that that 68% of people are now exhibiting a behavior, 68% of American adults are exhibiting a behavior which would have been diagnosed as a mental health, uh, a mental health issue a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're all feeling a little crazy right now. We're all doing some really weird things. Um, so, so the first thing you got to appreciate is that everyone has been impacted. Some people aren't acknowledging it. But most of all, you have to acknowledge it, and you may have to help you may have to help them come to grips with some things that they have changed or in their family has changed. So don't assume that they. We all know that, that most of them didn't know what they should have known about getting a new house before. They really don't now, and so you might have to help them work through some of this to decide. You know where where where, where are they now? Where is their family now? Where are their kids now? in terms of their emotional attachment with where they're going to go. But, but, but the important thing is don't make any assumptions. Mm -hmm. there, there, there is you, an assumption right now is, is, is suicidal. There's no way you're going you're gonna to guess where your people are. You'd be maybe pretty lucky to guess where you are personally, let alone where your clients are. So the, number one is take some time, talk to people, have an opportunity when you're not in a selling mode to simply download them about well, where do you think you are, what changes do you think are going to happen in the next six months? So be sensitive to that because if you if you try to run them, if, it, if deep inside of them they're already made a change and you're trying to run them down the old road, it won't be a good result. You know, it's, it's interesting because um, we've had a few guests lately that have challenged realtors to really listen to their clients. And it sounds like yeah, in a lot of ways you're <laughs> asking them to just yeah. listen to their cli your clients. Yeah. Um, and recognize, by the way, that what your what your client's telling you, it may be the first time they've articulated it. They may be hearing themselves for the first time. So it's good for both of you. Yeah, definitely. You know, I, I've had realtors tell me um, in the past that as somebody said, there's there's nothing wrong with having a great therapist. I've had some realtors tell me that a lot of times their yeah. clients look at them like, a therapist and, and kind of want them to guide them um, emotionally and, and all yeah. of that through the transaction as well, not just guide them, but guide them emotionally through that transaction. And, so and now they're going to be feeling insecure and they'll be more than willing to pay for it. And I, I think what we're seeing now is that more and more firms are expanding their menu of services. Mm -hmm. And while their license doesn't allow them to call it counseling services, they might call it orientation services is all all kinds of names but 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 th we're not suggesting you need to do this without a compensation because they're going to need to do this or they're going to make mistakes and of course the realtor will get blamed for them you know so it, it, again everywhere you look there's opportunity yeah definitely um a comment here from from lisa she said people have also gotten to experience how much time they save by not commuting during covid um, yeah. And it, she said, it's the most unnatural feeling to leave your house for anything other than groceries. People are willing to meet you virtually instead of in person. So she's already definitely seeing that shift there with her clients. Um, well, her, yeah, it's actually how much not so how much time is wasted by running around. Now, <laughs> I, I, of course, I've gone the other way. I've become a Costco uh, culturalist. 
yeah, it's it's sort of become like a like a, a combination of Boy Scouts and the Chamber of Commerce to go to Costco and you know, but but uh, that's because I live in the country. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm a, I'm the 7 a.m. crew at the grocery store. They all know me, and I ah. I know all of them. I'm I'm the only customer there at 7 a.m. So that's that's good for me. Um, all right. So moving moving on here, and and I do have a few more questions for Jeremy. But if you have questions, type them into the comments, and and I'll be sure to get to those. So so far, just a lot of great conversation happening in the comments, and we love to see that as well. Um, so Jeremy. I, I'm sure I, I think I already know the answer to this, but do you believe any or all of the new normal will be with us forever? Well, okay. Again, the, the, one of the benefits of being uh, reading the, 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 the work of many of the top futurists around, um, and that is when, when, we get, when, when, when we went into this thing at the end of 2019, we were already picking up speed. And by the way, this goes both personally, culturally, and professionally. The real estate industry, by example, was already climbing and picking up speed. Tremendous number of things were about to happen. So people like Gary Keller, um, the, the, the CEO of, of, uh, of uh, Realogy, other, have mm -hmm. basically said the major feature of the pandemic is things which were going to take 60 months are now taking 18 months. And oh, by the way, we've already gone down 12 months. Mm -hmm. So, so the fact is that I think you have to recognize that there's a, um, that those are going to happen and, and, and you need to be prepared for those. And, 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 and it, it's a fine thing, but go back to, go back to that question again. <clears throat> okay. So how do you believe any or all of the new normal will be with us? Okay. Forever? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I think that, that what's happening is just overall the level of change most of the rest of our lives will be such that that there'll be and I mean, we're not talking about you know each year you're gonna have to have a new wardrobe or each year you have to but we are talking about a constant change now as opposed to if you go back to the last century or if you go back two or three centuries ago it was level for 80 years mm -hmm. but certainly in the early uh, in the 1900s it plateaued you know depending on if there was a word but it's probably now going to be on a fairly steady ascension of change um, and Again, some folks will like that, other folks won't, but as a culture, we'll get used to change. So if you, yesterday in the New York Times, they had a whole feature on Zoom fashion. <laughs> yes, the, the, so the Zoom shirt is on its way out. Now there's a whole, there's a whole new fashion line to wear when you're on your, when your Zoom calls. I, I plan on, you know, getting on the internet and ordering up some. Right? <laughs> I don't know if you're aware of this, Jeremy, but headbands have made a comeback for the ladies. So just saying. Oh, there's some way to cover this <laughs> it's up. Be... It's because you only see us see it right here. So headbands have made a comeback. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Jeez. Now you know. Um, yeah. So here's the million dollar question, uh, Jeremy, and, and that's what do realtors need to do to remain competitive as we move forward? What should they be doing right now? What should they be doing three months, six months from now? Okay. First of all, is it okay if I make a homework assignment? I, okay. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> all right. So there was, a, there was a fellow named Jim Collins who 20 years ago wrote a, a book called From Good to Great, and it became a classic in, in people who, ha, who are, I guess the term is dynamic people. I mean, keep in mind that, that there's a lot of people whose lives never change. They just sort of drift through like, but, but most people in real estate have some sense of wanting to, to grow and so there's a book that he just came out with in, in, in January, and, and it's called Capital B, Capital E, Space 2.0. Can you show that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, I'd like to tell you, by the way, that I made this discovery. Actually, it was my wife who's involved in a senior leadership program for Rotary International, and uh, she brought it home. I said, what is this? Anyway. Chapter six and seven of this book, I've already read it twice. It's that good. I mean, it really is cool. Chapter six and seven of this book will help you get your head set up in the right, in the right framework. It's basically like an outline form. Mm -hmm. um, so, so the first thing you need to do is you need to have a vision. You need to, you need to say, okay, we're almost at the, you know, when we get to the end, when we move into the post-pandemic business period, we know it's going to be change. We know it's going to be a lot of change. Where do I want to be? And and this book will help you get your head straightened out so you can 
line some things up really well. So that's the that's the first step. Do uh, you have to have a document? Well, I don't know. It depends on how old you are. So I think you need a document because I think that's your commitment. So so mm -hmm. put together a post pandemic plan, and and then start it off. I mean, it, it says it doesn't matter. Start it off with the things you'd like to have change. Okay. I mean, it doesn't take long to sit down and say, boy, what would I? What would really make this job, this profession, fun for me? I mean, what would really make me get up in the morning and make you say, well, maybe I already like the way it is. Well. You're going to have to change that too, but but anyway. So take some take some leadership of yourself and figure that out. But as you move through that, recognize. So that's the for, second step. Mm -hmm. um, you you got to be on the right bus, okay? Lots of buses out there. Lots of buses going lots of places. Some buses don't go anywhere. They just show a movie on the windshield. Uh, okay, so you got to be on the right bus, and. That's as far as I can go on that without making Bob unhappy with me. <laughs> secondly, God forbid. Secondly, you got to be with the right people on the right bus. Mm -hmm. You can be on the right bus with the wrong people, not going to help. You got to be on the right bus with the right group of people because this is is going to be a lot of team sport here, and you need to help have people who are going to help you. But 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 and you need to be thinking about that sooner than later. Don't don't wait till the end because remember that when the gun goes off and we declare the pandemic over and the new normal in, that's you can't start develop your new normal that day. You want to have it in place that day. So so that's the other thing is right place, I mean right bus, right people, and then be working on it. Talk about it. I mean how much how much time a week should you spend talking about what the options are and where you're going and what you'd like. And the suggestion is it should be some period of time. Okay, very good. And that book again, uh, B 2.0, turning your business into an enduring great company. So, um, I'm, I saw that somebody or Dana actually said that she screenshotted it and she's going to suggest it to, um, the Houston business women's book club. So I would suggest that to others as well. Um, Jeremy, as always, you, you always give us such great information. It's very enlightening. You always challenge our members and that's why we, we like to have you on our program. Is there anything else you want to share with us this morning? Okay. I just, I, again, I want to go back to the same thing. It's scary. Okay. Let's not, let's not anybody act like, you know, bravado here, that this is no big deal. It's a really big deal. Understanding the new normal, adopting to the new normal is going to set the tone for the rest of your life. But the important thing is, unlike things that happened before, you get to do it. You can. There's enough of a menu out there that you're going to get to pick who you're going to be, what you're going to be, and who you're going to be with. So that's that's the big deal. Have a positive attitude and just think about the opportunity. That's my sense of it. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, a lot of people thanking you in the comments. This was. Uh, very insightful. And there's a quote there, be on the right bus with the right people. So they got the message from you, Jeremy. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so uh, next Monday, we will actually have uh, some representatives from the Texas Real Estate Commission. So be sure to mark your calendars for, for that. Um, and I hope you all, again, have a great week. I hope you're all happy and healthy and have power and water. Um, that's the, the most we can ask for this week, I think. Um, so yes, with yes. that, Yeah, definitely. So with that, we'll see you next Monday at 9 a.m. with the Texas Real Estate Commission. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Thanks, Christina.